Hi everyone here on this group. I thought I would uh, do a video with regards to an, an analysis with regards to Sir, Sir Keir Starmer's speech yesterday. He's an opposition leader, as we all know, in the United Kingdom. And he gave a speech which, you know, uh, I've got a lot of issues with. Obviously, you'd expect him to say that there should not be a ceasefire, which uh, everyone should expect that because at the end of the day, Israel is fighting a battle uh, against a terrorist organization. And uh, you'd expect him to say that, and he did say that. So we'll give him credit for that. I'll give him credit also with regards to you know, the steps he's taken in general since he's become the leader with regards to curbing anti-Semitism by, because he has done a lot of steps and good work with regards to that. But with regards to the Israel issue yesterday, in his speech which he made, he doesn't uh, mention the worry he's got for any soldiers that are putting their uh, lives on the line the Misirat Nefesh, uh, everything they're doing to protect Am Israel, and it's not just they're protecting Israel, they're protecting the whole of the Western world. They are protecting uh, Britain and also the United States. He doesn't mention any, all or any of that stuff. He just talks about the empathy he's got about how much the Palestinians have suffered. But have they suffered? They've got uh, billions and billions and billions of and dollars. They could have, they could have uh, with all the aid that especially the UK has given, and uh, he doesn't mention a any of that, that where they end up, uh, what they try to do with this money in general, everything. Uh, he doesn't mention that he talks, he separates that uh, Hamas and the Palestinians are separate. And yes, po they, they, they are. I'm not talking that they are connected and they want them in charge. But he doesn't mention or that uh, Hamas was actually democratically elected in 2006 with a landslide of 45% of the votes from the, the Palestinian public. He doesn't mention any of them. You know, they should be, you know, they should, should be asked why did they elect them, especially with the charter, what's inside the charter of Hamas against the Jews. And uh, he, he doesn't question any of that. He doesn't, he hardly speaks about all the rocket fire that Israel has endured, the 8,000 plus rockets all over Israel. He doesn't mention that. He, he just mentions about how the Palestinians have to move from one place to the, the other. But we know that uh, most, uh, more than a million uh, residents of the south of Israel and of the north of Israel have had to relocate also, their lives totally disrupted. Uh, not just uh, all the horror that they have suffered and uh, everything else. A, a lot of people have suffered, uh, family members murdered and so that. He doesn't mention, uh, hardly mention that. And the worst bit I thought of the speech yesterday which he made was that he starts talking about now all of a sudden a two-state solution. He doesn't acknowledge that Israel actually, in fact, they uh, expelled uh, a lot of residents and a lot of settlements back in 2005 and gave greenhouses to the Palestinians. It doesn't mention any of that, which and at the time, uh, you know, many people were against it. I'm not going to go into a political discussion about it, but he doesn't mention any of that in his uh, speech yesterday. They gave back uh, Gaza and we saw it was a disastrous uh, experiment and uh, they could have made it into a uh, Dubai or inside a, uh, another Singapore, but they didn't do that. You know, we saw what they did. So he starts talking in yesterday's speech about a two-state solution. That, that's the only thing in his mind. J just barring in mind what, what we just suffered, that's the only thing on his mind that now more than ever there has to be. He, and he, he's, he actually uh, criticizes in, inside the government that the government hasn't done enough. And he starts, in a way, blaming all the settlement building and saying that was a cause for, he doesn't say it in so many words, but he's sort of implying that that is a reason why, why there's no peace. He doesn't uh, uh, acknowledge the 2000 uh, agreement which Ehud Barak tried to do with Yasser Arafat at the time, many of the other proposals, especially which uh, Ehud Olmert did in the 2000s, and uh, all that. He doesn't mention any of that. He just makes out as if uh, Israel has, uh, you know, the settlements is like the main block to it. And he, he starts saying in a harsh term that we haven't done enough as a country to make this two settlement agreement. What is his two settlement agreement? He's not saying it. It sounds to me the way he was speaking yesterday, saying it wouldn't be so favorable at all for Israel. It could put uh, Israel in the security uh, risks and all of that. So I'm, I'm not at all happy about it. And on top of it, you know, there's you, the Labour Party itself is infiltrated by people that are calling for a ceasefire. They're, they're not worried at all. There's, there's, there's a ton, hundreds of thousands of members going on all these marches all over the UK, which are Labour members, and all the stuff they're chanting. No one's protesting inside these marches or saying that the hostages should be released. You don't see any of that inside these marches. These aren't not at all peaceful marches. They're saying it's slogans inside there. There's uh, images of what they've been sharing. 
that inside these protests and everything else, he hasn't uh, he hasn't uh, hardly given any punishments out. He hasn't uh, warned the people going to these protests that they shouldn't uh, say all these slogans. He didn't really say that in yesterday's uh, speech. So there's a lot to be concerned about over here, and uh, you know, I just hopefully uh, I'm just giving a blessing that all our, our chayalim are going to be protected so many people from all over Israel uh, people have moved back from England from America from everywhere to to uh, protect this country there's so much going on we see all the kindness that's going on in all the corners of Israeli society at the moment it's absolutely phenomenal with what's going on at the moment I just wanted to echo that you know so much kindness going on so much uh, and so much in all departments or wherever we are in the society we are, have never been so united together and uh, unfortunately it's taken these circumstances for this and uh, let's hope the unity will stay and will, there'll just be peace in Israel there'll be none of the soldiers are gonna no more injuries nothing we're gonna succeed and uh, we're just gonna have peace and security here in Israel in long term with we don't know what uh, the future installs for all of us after this but hopefully this will be a uh, smooth and uh, we, we don't want in general we just want peace in general that's what uh, that's what we we all want all the residents of Israel we're not looking uh, we're, we're a good people over here and we've shown that over here and uh, yeah I just hope everything's gonna be good I just thought I'll, I'll share th some thoughts with regards to the Labour Party obviously we know that it's been infiltrated by anti-Zionism anti-Semitism especially since Corbyn came into power in 2015 and uh, unfortunately we see a lot of the members still uh, are not perfect at all with uh, these uh, videos so uh, yeah let's hope there'll be safety in Israel and uh, Hashem will and Hashem will protect all our chayalim and soldiers and uh, hopefully uh, have a good day